Hello and welcome or welcome back to the AGF Design Studio channel. My name is Alana, I'm a freelance lettering artist and designer, and today we are going to be reviewing Adobe Fresco 3.3 update. So there are quite a few new features to go over and some fun updates that will probably be really helpful for you guys to know about. If you haven't seen my Adobe Fresco for Beginners video or my videos on motion, I'll link those in the description box below. Those will be really helpful in addition to this video. So without further ado, let's jump into it. So the first update we're going to take a look at is the eyedropper. Super simple, pretty quick. Let's say you're drawing on your canvas, you're adding some things, some new elements, and then you wanna use your eyedropper tool. Go down to the eyedropper, grab a new color. Let's say I want this nice golden yellow. It'll select that color and then go right back to the last tool that you had selected. So seamlessly, I can just keep drawing now with that new color without having to reselect that previous tool. It makes your workflow a lot easier. It's a really small change, but it's actually really convenient. And now that it's here, I can't even imagine that the older version actually didn't have it. So really simple, really great update to the eyedropper. And just as a reminder, you can always also long press with one finger around the canvas to select a new color. So let's say I'm reopening this document now after many months away, I've done other things. I, I have no recollection really of where I was going with this piece. And it would be nice for me to know what brushes I was using. The recent brushes section is here to save the day. So you can go right into your category and you will see a new category called recent right at the very top. And whatever brushes you are using in your document will appear on this list, as many as you had used in your document before you had closed it. So I know that I used the Comics Letterer brush, that's consistent, and then I also used the Pencil brush. Super convenient feature, right? To have the Recent Brushes section right at the very top so you don't miss out on where you were, so you can just pick up right where you left off. Really convenient. For this next update, we're actually gonna move away from our shapes here and actually preview this new feature called Automatic Perspective. So to showcase that, I'm going to pull in a photo that I took. I'm gonna load that up. So I've got my photo here. Looks great. I feel like I'm back in Mexico. It's great. So thanks to the new Handy Perspective tool, we can draw one point, two point, three point perspective in Adobe Fresco. But what if we want to generate our own perspective grids automatically without having to set up our vanishing points ourselves? This is what this automatic perspective feature does. So with my photo layer selected, I'm going to go to my precision panel here. Now, since I've already imported my own image onto the canvas, I can actually just select layer since that's the one I have selected. And as you can see, it has automatically generated where my vanishing point is in the proper perspective. So if I wanted to draw similar building scape or similar sort of idea based on the perspective in this photo, I can now do that. Very cool, very convenient. Of course, as usual, you can always edit your vanishing point and move it around as you like. Another handy feature is to have your snap to grid axis on so that when you, for example, start drawing, it'll follow the exact lines of your vanishing points. It'll follow exactly according to that vanishing point. If for any reason you don't want your perspective grid on anymore, no problem, just toggle that grid off and it'll disappear. So now we're gonna get a little look at some of the motion updates that have happened. 
If you happen to see my Adobe Fresco motion tutorial, you may have noticed in your playing around with it that you used to not be able to transform individual frames or have the option to transform all frames. So I'll show you a little bit of a demo of what motion looks like now when you transform. Keeping in mind that when you have motion active on a layer, once you start adding the effects, you can't really go back, they can't really be undone. So I always duplicate my layer and leave a version that doesn't have any motion applied to it just in case I wanna go back. So I'm gonna to go to this corner here and I'm gonna select motion, start by duplicating this frame. And then I'm going to go over here to my transform tool, which is this little arrow here, and you'll see a pop up come up and it'll say, do you want to transform the entire layer and all of its associated frames or just a single frame? So what this means is if I end up selecting entire layer, any transformation change that I make to this one frame will be applied to that first frame that we had as well. So let's hit entire layer and see what that does. So I'm gonna make it smaller, boom. So you'll see that when I go back to frame one, it's also that same small scale because I selected, I selected entire layer. Okay, let's go back. So now let's try it with the other option, selected frame. You'll see that that first frame is still in that original position. And in the second frame, only that one transformation was applied to that particular selected frame. Why is this handy? You don't have to worry about all of your edits being universally transformed and applied across all of your frames if you don't choose to have them be. Actually, let's uh, let's finish off our little animation here. Let's duplicate. So now I also want, I want this one to be transformed, but in a different way from that other transformation. So I'm gonna hit selected frame and I'm gonna do a little something different again. So it's different from the second frame and it's different from the first frame. <laughs> so it's just kind of interesting that you can really have more control over your frames, over the way that you do motion in Adobe Fresco with this new update. You may or may not know, but every single season, illustrator, educator, Kyle T. Webster, releases a seasonal brush pack that's available for Fresco and Photoshop users. And it's available to download right now straight from the app. So let's take a look at that. You can go straight to your pixel brushes right here. And at the bottom, you'll see a little plus sign. Just give that a tap. And here you can select discover new brushes. So the winter 2022 brushes are the newest pack. So just to download that, you just hit follow. and done. From here, all of your winter 2022 brushes will be right in there, ready for you to use. These are really obviously winter themed, so he's got some fun like snowflake shapes, like he puts so much into these brushes and it really shows. Like how cool is that? You get like an, in an instant mountain they're so much fun to experiment with. And as you may have noticed, there's a whole bunch of other brush, it, brush packs that are available straight within Adobe Fresco. So if you happened to not see or not get any of these other cool brush packs, they are a bunch of them for you to download instantly from the app. So don't waste time. These are free for you to use. I highly recommend you check them out and favorite your favorite the ones that you like the most so that you can have them ready for you in your favorite section. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this little update video for Adobe Fresco 3.3. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you so much for your continued support. Leave me a comment with any questions that you might have and send me some video request ideas. I love hearing from the community and I'd love to know your feedback. All right, guys, see you in the next one. Bye.